Welcome to this tutorial on hypothesis testing for the case when sigma is unknown. It is a good idea to watch part one of this tutorial series first, where the concept of hypothesis testing is first introduced and demonstrated using the case of sigma known. As we know from previous tutorials, the only real difference between the sigma known and sigma unknown cases is that for sigma unknown, we use s as a point estimate for sigma, and we use the t table instead of the z table. Otherwise, everything we learn for sigma known holds true for sigma unknown. The test statistic for hypothesis testing for the population mean when sigma is unknown is a t-test. So t is equal to x bar minus the hypothesized value of mu divided by s over the square root of n. Let's see how we would conduct a two-tailed test about the population mean for sigma unknown. Suppose we want to know if the mean fill in a box of cereal is truly 16 ounces. If the process is working properly, then there should be 16 ounces on average in each cereal box. Therefore, the null hypothesis would be stated as follows. H naught colon mu is equal to 16 ounces. The alternative hypothesis is counter to the null, and it would be stated as H A colon mu is not equal to 16 ounces. When the hypotheses are written like this, equal to and not equal to, this is called a two-tail test since we are interested in two tails of rejection. The upper tail if the mean fill is too much above 16 ounces, and the lower tail if the mean fill is much less than the hypothesized 16 ounces. The area in between these two tails in the middle is called the non-rejection region. To test our hypotheses using the critical value approach, we must first take a sample, then calculate the test statistic, and look up the critical value. Remember, the critical value acts as a boundary between the rejection and non-rejection regions. And finally, we would compare the test statistic with the critical value to come to a statistical conclusion. So we take a sample of 30 cereal boxes, measure them, and calculate a sample mean of 15.3 ounces with a sample standard deviation of 0.5 ounces. The test statistic is a t-test instead of a z-test since sigma is unknown. t is equal to x bar minus the hypothesized value of the mean divided by s over the square root of n, which is, in this case, 15.3 minus 16 divided by 0.5 divided by the square root of 30, and that equals negative 7.675. Now we need to look up the critical value. Let's use an alpha value of 0.05, that is a 0.05 level of significance. Since this is a two-tailed test, we need to split alpha in half, so we get 0.025, and then we need to look up degrees of freedom in the t-table, and that would be n minus 1, 30 minus 1, which is 29 degrees of freedom. So looking up in the t-table under alpha divided in half of 0.025 and 29 degrees of freedom, we get 2.045. That is our critical value that divides the rejection and non-rejection regions. So we have a test statistic of minus 7.675, and we have a critical value of plus and minus 2.045. The critical value splits the rejection regions and non-rejection regions like this. Now we need to compare the test statistic with the critical value to see whether it falls in the rejection region or the non-rejection region. It falls around here on the distribution, so our decision would be to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the mean fill is not equal to 16 ounces. We can also use the p-value approach to come to a statistical conclusion. For a two-tailed test, we must double the p-value and compare it with alpha. The rule using the p-value approach for a two-tailed test is to reject the null if the p-value is less than the alpha value. We are using an alpha value of 0.05 here, so any p-value less than 0.05, we would reject the null hypothesis. Okay, let's see what p-value our test statistic gives us. Looking across the 29 degrees of freedom for negative 7.675, we see that it would be way off the chart. You can see it starts with 0 0.683, 0 0.854, 1.055, 
and keep following along that row until you get to the last number which is 3.659 so if you were to theoretically keep moving to the right the 7.675 would be way off the chart now looking up from the last number at 29 degrees of freedom you see that the p-value would be 0 0.0005 so obviously if we keep moving to the right to get to the correct p-value it would be close to zero so since 7.675 isn't on the chart it would be way off the chart and the p-value would be very small certainly smaller than alpha then according to the rejection rule we would reject the null hypothesis and find that there is evidence to conclude that the true mean fill is not equal to 16 ounces. So that is how to conduct a two-tailed hypothesis test for the mean for sigma unknown. Now let's see how we would conduct a one-tailed test of the mean for sigma unknown. Suppose a chain of oil changing service stations advertises that it will change your oil in 10 minutes or under. We want to know if this claim is really true. Now remember the null hypothesis is the status quo if the process is working properly. So we state the null hypothesis as H naught colon mu is less than or equal to 10 minutes. That is if the process is working properly according to the service station's claims. The alternative hypothesis is counter to the null and it is what we are looking for evidence to support. It would be stated as H A colon mu is greater than 10 minutes. When the hypotheses are written like this with a less than and greater than symbols, we see that we are focusing on one direction and this is called a one tail test. We are interested in one tail of rejection and that would be the upper tail since that's what we're looking for evidence for. Always look at your alternative hypothesis. The direction you see in the alternative hypothesis tells you which tail the rejection region is in. Here you can see the greater than symbol in the alternative hypothesis. So we are looking to see if the sample provides evidence that an oil change is greater than 10 minutes. So the rejection region is in the upper tail area. Okay, now we are ready to take a sample. Let's say we take a sample of 25 cars that are being serviced for an oil change and we find the sample average is 11.5 minutes with a sample standard deviation of 4 minutes. Is that enough evidence to conclude that the mean oil change time is greater than the claimed 10 minutes? Is this enough evidence to conclude that the mean oil change time is greater than the claimed 10 minutes? To answer this question, we first have to calculate the test statistic using t is equal to x bar minus the hypothesized value of the mean divided by s over the square root of n and we get 11.5 minus 10 divided by 4 over the square root of 25 and that is 1.875 now we have to see if this value is significant so we have to look up a critical value in the t table first let's stipulate the level of significance as 0.01 we don't split alpha in half for a one tail test since all of alpha will be in that one tail. The degrees of freedom are n minus 1 which is 24 degrees of freedom. Now we are ready to look up the critical value in the t table. Looking under 0.01 and 24 degrees of freedom we get a critical value of 2.492. So let's mark the critical value on the distribution here and the test statistic of 1.875 would be around here. It is clear that the test statistic falls in the non-rejection region so we would come to the conclusion that do not reject the null and therefore we don't find evidence to conclude that the true mean is greater than 10 minutes. We can also use the p-value approach to come to a statistical conclusion. The rejection rule using the p-value approach for a one-tail test is reject the null if the p-value is less than the alpha value. We are using an alpha value of 0.01 here, so any p-value less than 0.01, we would reject the null. Okay, let's see what p-value our test statistic of 1.875 and 24 degrees of freedom gives us. Looking across at 24 degrees of freedom for 1.875, we find that the test statistic would be somewhere between these two numbers. And looking up, we see that the p-value is somewhere between 0.025 and 0.05, which are both not less than the alpha value of 0.01. 
So we do not reject the null hypothesis. And we conclude that there is no evidence that the mean time to change oil is greater than 10 minutes. As you can see, the conclusion is the same whether you use the critical value approach or the p-value approach. That concludes this tutorial on hypothesis testing for the population mean when sigma is unknown. We covered both two-tailed and one-tailed tests, and we used the critical value approach and the p-value approach to come to a statistical conclusion. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on hypothesis testing part two, and I hope you learned something.